Good morning and happy Easter everybody. It's great to be here again and to be able to be worshipping together and strangely meeting in our own homes but together in unity knowing that Jesus is alive and he is bringing our, his great love to us each in our own homes by his Holy Spirit and I just want to um, pray that today will be a real blessing to everybody who's watching and for those people that aren't able to, to see what's happening today we our prayers are with you and we know that you will be blessed wherever you are because God's promise is to be with you so I'm going to start today's service with a prayer which is from the United Methodists it's a prayer that's gone throughout the world uh, for today so let's pray together when everything was dark and it seemed that the Sun would never shine again your love broke through your love was too strong too wide too deep for death to hold the, the sparks cast by your love dance and spread and burst forth with resurrection light Gracious God, we praise you for the light of new life made possible through Jesus. We praise you for the light of new life that shone on the first witnesses of resurrection. We praise you for the light of new life that continues to shine in our hearts today. We pray that the Easter light of life hope and joy will live in each day through us and that we will be bearers of that light bringing light into the lives of others thank you lord that you love each one of us and lord jesus you crushed death and we can know that that promise of eternal life is because of you not through our own efforts because of your great sacrifice so thank you jesus and in john 3 16 it says for god so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life and we praise you lord for your promise and your sacrifice and your life that life in all its fullness that as believers we can just enjoy and um, know that we're cherished by a loving God. So enjoy the rest of the service and all the people that will be contributing will um, pray that the Holy Spirit will be anointing them as they bring God's word to you. So enjoy the rest of the service. God bless you. Enjoy your Easter day. Today's Bible reading is taken from Jeremiah 31 verses 1 to 6. At that time, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the clans of Israel and they will be my people. This is what the Lord says. The people who survive the sword will find favour in the desert. I will come to give rest to Israel. The Lord appeared to us in the past, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with loving kindness. I will build you up again, and you will be rebuilt, O virgin Israel. Again you will take up your tambourines and go out to dance with the joyful. Again you will plant vineyards on the hills of Samaria. The farmers will plant them and enjoy their fruit. There will be a day when watchmen cry out on the hills of Ephraim, Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. Thanks be to God for this reading. Amen. Happy Easter! So it's Easter day already. How exciting. All that chocolate, Easter egg hunts. But that's not really what it's about, is it? No. Today we're going to do the Easter story for you. 
We're mm -hmm. going to be using Easter eggs and props to help us. So Madeline, here's your first Easter egg clue. This one says, Happy Easter, what a wonderful day to learn about Jesus. We have a little game to play. The household items in the verse will give you a clue and take you through the story of how much Jesus loves you. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, people laid something and palm branches on the ground for the donkey to walk upon. That's right, it was the coat. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, people laid coats and palm branches on the ground for the donkey to walk upon. The rest of the week, Jesus stayed in Jerusalem. On Thursday, it was time for the Passover festival. The disciples got the meal ready in an upstairs room. His disciples were arguing about who washed the stinky feet. Who do you think washed the stinky feet? Here's your next Easter egg clue, Toby. Jesus washed the disciples' feet with water and a something. That's right. Jesus washed the stinky feet to show how much he loved his disciples and how they should sh show their love to others. But what did he use, Toby? Jesus washed the disciples' feet with water and a towel. Here's the next clue, Fleur. Thank you. The disciples shared their last supper together in the upper room, gathered around a something. What could it be? That's right, it was the table. The disciples shared their last supper together in the upper room, gathered around a table. A table. Here's the fourth clue, Madeline. Thank you. This one says, Jesus, gave, Jesus took the something, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples to eat. That's right, it was bread. Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples to eat. Jesus knew that one of his friends was planning to betray him to the people in charge. Toby, here's your next Easter egg clue. Jesus told the disciples, the one who dips his hand in the something with me will betray me. That's right. It was a bowl. Jesus told the disciples, the one who dips his hand in the bowl with me will betray me. The next part of the story was after the Passover meal. Fleur, here's your next Easter egg clue. Thank you. Jesus went to the Mount of something to pray with his disciples. What could it be? That's right, it was the Mount of Olives. Olives! Meanwhile, Judas went to the authorities. Madeline, here's your next Easter egg clue. <laughs> um, this one says, Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of what? That's right, Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Toby, here's your next Easter egg clue. Thank you. When the soldiers came to arrest him, Jesus told the disciple to put away his something. right it was a sword when the soldiers came to arrest him 
Jesus told the disciple to put away his sword. Jesus didn't want any fighting, so there was nothing his friends could do to help. So they ran away. But Peter, even though he was scared, he followed the soldiers. So let's find out, Flo, what happened next. Thank you. Peter was sitting beside at something when he denied three times being Jesus' friend. That's right, there was a fire. Jesus, Peter was sitting beside a fire when he denied three times being Jesus' friend. Jesus was first taken to the high priest, then to Pilate, then to Herod and back to Pilate again. The people made fun of him and were really unkind to him. Let's find out what they did. Thank you. The crown was the crown placed upon Jesus' head was made of something. That's right. It was thorns. The crown placed upon Jesus' head was made of thorns. Pilate wanted to free Jesus, but the people insisted that he be crucified. So Pilate finally agreed. He was taken to a place called the Skull and he was put on a cross. Let's find out what the soldiers did. Squeaky. This one says the soldiers threw something to see who would get Jesus' clothes. That's right, it was dice. The soldiers threw dice to see who would get Jesus' clothes. As Jesus was dying, he said he was thirsty. Here's your next clue, Fleur. Thank you. They soaked a something in the jar of wine vinegar. That's right, it was a sponge. They soaked a sponge in the jar of wine vinegar. Let's find out what happened when Jesus died. This one says, when Jesus died, darkness came over the land and something of the temple was torn in two. That's right. When Jesus died, darkness came over the land and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus had died on the Friday. All his disciples and his family were really sad and frightened. So let's see what happens next. Yeah. On Sunday, when Mary, Salome and Mary Magdalene went to visit the tomb, they brought along sweet smelling something to put on Jesus' body. That's right, it was spices. On Sunday, when Mary, Salome and Mary Magdalene went to visit the tomb, they brought along sweet smelling spices to put on Jesus' body. Can you remember what they found when they got to the tomb? Let's find out, Fleur. Thank you. The something ro was rolled away from the tomb and Jesus' body was not there. That's right. It was a stone. The stone was rolled away from the tomb and Jesus' body was not there. So there's one more egg and it has such good news in it. And it's the news that we're celebrating today on Easter Sunday. Shall we find out what it says? Yes. yes. Okay. Madam, if you hold that and we can all read it together. This stone reminds us that Jesus is risen. As he said, Hallelujah. Happy Easter. 
I hope you enjoyed our version of the Easter story with all its props and clues. So on Friday, we remembered that Jesus died on the cross. And he died because we turn away from God and we say, I don't want to do it your way, God. I'm sorry. I want to do it my way. And that's what we call sin. And Jesus dying is God's precious gift to us so that we can be friends with Jesus. But today we celebrate the fact that he rose from the dead. He defeated death and he's alive again. This proves that he's really the son of God and that when he died, we were saved from our sins. What a great thing to celebrate and I hope you have a really happy Easter. Bye bye. On this Easter morning, our reading is from John chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. Good morning everybody and a very happy Easter to all of you on this fantastic morning when we celebrate the presence of the risen Christ at the very heart of the church and of the world. So this morning we're going to explore the Easter story and this image is one that is close to my heart. It's of daffodils. Uh, and not just any daffodils, but these are reputed to be Wordsworth's daffodils on the northern shore of Lake Oldswater. And I love daffodils at this time of year. You get the lockdown of winter, when everything is frozen hard and cold, and all of nature is waiting, its life seemingly in abeyance until the warmth comes once more. And then all the ecosystems start to kick back into life. Energy starts to flow and everywhere we just see an abundance of green and colour. And these daffodils are just wonderful. The signifiers of Easter and springtime. And of course, in the Easter story, we find ourselves in a lockdown of hope 
we find ourselves in a narrative where all of those who are described, those who are in the story, are suffering. They're in despair. They've lost hope. They think it's the end. They can't see any way ahead because Jesus is dead and they saw him die. They saw him die cruelly on a Roman cross. And early in the morning, here they are coming to the tomb, a tomb that has been closed shut. It's a story of death and despair. It's the end. And yet, when they get there, that's not what they find. And in this moment, as John describes it, we are facing the very worst with Jesus. His, his body has gone. Mary comes, she sees, she runs back. She tells Simon Peter and the beloved disciple, and they go to the tomb and they see that emptiness. The worst of all nightmares come true. And yet, in this story, the presence of Jesus brings new and wonderful life. It's such a beautiful story, is this, as John tells it. Mary goes into the tomb, the angels speak to her, she comes out and she thinks she sees the gardener and engages in a conversation. But as soon as he speaks her name, she knows, she knows it is her Lord, she knows it is Jesus. A moment of wonderful testimony and exclamation as she says, Rabboni. Jesus brings new life beyond all expectation, new life beyond all hoping, new life in the most wonderful way imaginable in this story. When I went to the Yorkshire Sculpture Park a few years ago now, uh, I saw this fantastic installation from Zaum Plenser, a Spanish sculptor and worker with metal. And this one is called Spiegel 1 and 2. As you can see, there are a pair of figures that are an open meshed work of metal in which you can go and stand. You can actually stand inside the figures. And as ever, he works with words and the figures are made of words. If we look at it closely, I want to suggest to you that here is a fabulous image of Easter's truth. This is what John is getting at in the story he tells. You've got that sad group of people coming at daybreak and they're confronted with the end. They're confronted with Jesus having gone, his body disappeared, their grief is overwhelming. And then Jesus brings new life. If you look at the left-hand figure, you can see there is a young woman standing inside it, illuminated by the light of dawn. That, seems to me, is where Mary stood. She stood within the risen presence of Jesus, the living word of God, whose word overwhelmed and empowered, enfolded her in that moment in the garden. And then she tells the others, and if you look at the right-hand side of the image, you can see the others going in and experiencing that presence for themselves as the risen Christ inhabits them and, and they live within his presence on that first Easter day and everything is transformed. You can see why I love the image. It speaks so powerfully to me of that risen Christ experience at the centre of Easter Day, which is Mary's gift from God. And it brings to mind for me the passage from Jeremiah we've heard, which I think frames Easter Day, just as it would have framed Jesus' own understanding of what God wanted. Because in that wonderful text in Jeremiah chapter 31, God says these words, I have loved you with an everlasting love. 
Just stop for a moment and think about that. That's what God is saying to you on this Easter morning. It's why Easter happened. I have loved you with an everlasting love. That's why we have Easter. This is God's intention from the beginning of creation. God's love poured out to each and to all. And here on Easter Day, that's what we're celebrating. And the prophet Jeremiah goes on to say that God's promise will come again and again and again. God will be with the people. God will bring new life and they will see it and the nation will be restored. It's a wonderful promise and instruction of hope. And in that empty tomb, that Promise takes shape and form, and in the garden, Mary meets it face to face in the presence of the risen Christ, and she walks straight into it, like the woman in the image here. She walks straight into it, and the words and the letters of those ancient promises from God become her truth, shapes who she is, just like the sculpture. And she goes back and she tells the disciples and later that day in that upper room Christ comes in his risen presence, stands in their midst and breathes his spirit upon them and they stand in that awesome place of promise and new life too. I have loved you with an everlasting love. And Mary then gives the Easter testimony par excellence. She says to her friends, I have seen the Lord. And she has. She's been enfolded. She has inhabited his presence. He has filled her. She now is transformed and she'll never be the same again. Nor will we. Because we have entered the living word. We his Easter people have stood within the wonder of his truth and owned it for ourselves and have shone with his grace. We have seen the Lord. And so Jesus on Easter day takes all that is hopeless, all that is deathly, all that has no promise, and he opens up a new dimension, because that is at the heart of Easter Day, a new dimension which gives hope and optimism to this needy, suffering, longing world. And I've tried to capture that in this image. The figure of Christ is from Lorne Abbey, a retreat centre in Rutland. It's a big sculpture that stands outside the house. And here I've used it to represent the risen Christ standing in front of Mary. Not just the risen Christ, but the cosmic Christ. Here present from the heart of eternity. Here present beyond death. Here present from the heart of God's eternal love, his everlasting love for you and me, Jesus opens up a new dimension of hope and promise because he stands here from eternity itself, beyond life and death. He stands there in front of Mary and she inhabits this new dimension of truth, which is for all of us as the promise comes alive and we can feel it. Now that is a springtime worth celebrating. Just as the daffodils have come up, so too this promise has arisen in his presence within you and me, has arisen for the sake of the whole world. From the heart of eternity, the promise is ours. We are loved with an everlasting love and we have seen the Lord. May God bless us all with that wonderful trace on this fabulous Easter day. Lord, we begin our intercessions to you with a sincere thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord, that we are bidden in your word to come boldly to your throne of grace in a time of trouble and to ask for grace and for mercy. 
Lord, you know that we are living each day in unprecedented time of trouble. These are the perilous times that you warned us would come upon the whole world before the return of Jesus. But your ears are always open to the voices of your children as they cry out to you. Thank you, you have shown such faithfulness in responding to the untold thousands of prayers, first for our Prime Minister. That you would save alive Boris Johnson and that he would not die in his sins, but hear your voice and your presence reaching out to him. We thank you, Lord, for all those people that you've used in these times of crisis for him and for the drawing of your Holy Spirit. We continue to ask for his full recovery, Lord God, both physically and spiritually. We ask that you direct his heart so that what Satan has prepared for harm and for evil, you progressively turn for good. Thank you, Lord. We continue to beseech you to lead him and all those in authority at this time with your wisdom, which you promise, Lord, to give liberally if we ask for it. We know, Lord, that this situation of this virus is impossible to manage without the Father of Lights. For, Lord, it is in, in your light that we see light. Hear our prayers. Lord, we make earnest prayer to you also for all those souls known only to you who are most vulnerable, the families living day to day on the breadline even before this crisis, the families who live in the fear of violence and abuse, Lord, be their speedy help, we pray. Shine your light powerful into those dark places and bring help and comfort to those families. We pray for the elderly who live alone and who are struggling with many fears. Also, Lord, we continue our intercession for the courageous and selfless doctors and nurses working 24 hours in our hospitals. We ask for your supernatural protection and strength to continue. And we include also all those hidden ones who keep these essential services running. The paramedics, the porters in the hospital, the cleaners, the cooks, and those who man the telephone, telephone lines. Lord, we cry out to you, who alone sees every situation for nothing is hid from your sight. Lord, we pray for our own families, especially for those members who do not know you and who, up till now, have felt self-sufficient, have seen no need for a saviour. We earnestly pray that they will emerge from all of this different people that they will begin, by the drawing of your spirit, to question their ways and instead begin to respond to your calling and to your spirit in their lives. We pray, Lord, that you would help them see clearly, flood their understanding with light, their need for a saviour. We ask that you would use us who love our families so dearly and that the Holy Spirit will show us in the days to come what, when to speak and how to answer the questions they may ask. We ask you to renew your favour to us in their eyes, Lord God. And so we bring all these, our supplications, with thanksgiving because we know you hear us giving to the Lord who bids us come.
to bring our prayers and our supplications and who promises both to hear and to do. Even our silent prayers, Lord, you hear and you answer our cries. We thank you and ask that you continue to touch our hearts with those things on your heart day by day. And so we offer up these and all supplications in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, name above all names. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Hello everyone. In this part of our service, we come to share in a virtual agape love feast. I hope you've got something to eat and something to drink to hand. And if you'd like to follow the service on the screen and make the responses in the bold print, that would be absolutely wonderful. And we'll have a real sense of sharing in this together on this fabulous Easter Sunday morning. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Jesus said, People will come from east and west and north and south. An agape meal is a radical expression of God's grace. God's hospitality knows no boundaries. We read in the Gospels of the meals Jesus shared with his disciples. We remember how long after Easter the Apostles broke bread together. On this glorious Easter morning, we share food once again as a church, knowing that the Holy Spirit is with us all, wherever we are. We come to express our faith and our thanks. As we share our food, we are grateful for this abundance. May God give us a hunger for justice and a determination to serve the poor. The Emmaus story reminds us that Christ is seen in the ordinary things of life. Ordinary daily events So come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless this virtual agape meal. Bless our food and drink. May we be enthused, envisioned and inspired. I invite you to take your food. We share as we take and we eat our food together. Let's eat. I invite you to take your drink. We share as we drink together.
May the light of Christ, rising in glory, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds, for Christ the morning star has risen and is alive and reigns for ever. Alleluia! Christ is risen! And so may the blessing of God, the giver of life, the bearer of pain and the maker of love, be our joy, our delight, our blessing this day and for all eternity. Amen. Happy Easter, everybody. <laughs>